And we're back in Sydney today for another episode of This Is My Architecture. And today I'm joined by Nico from CoreLogic. G'day, Nico. G'day, Adrian. How are you? Very good. So today we're going to talk a little bit about house prices and indices. But before we do that, tell us a little bit about what CoreLogic does. Well, we're a real estate data company and basically we crunch a whole lot of numbers every day. Uh, one example are the house price indexes. Fantastic. So, you know, uh, watching house prices is a little bit like a national sport here in Australia. Run us through some of the challenges associated with what you guys do. So in the past, when trying to test a model change, um, we'd have to go through significant effort and time to essentially sequentially run day after day after day of change on our on-prem hardware. Mm. And that was the main challenge. Yeah, so you know, we've got an interesting architecture here. Run us through how it works. So basically we use Jenkins as a generic scheduling tool and it just sends tasks to be worked on to an SQS queue. This SQS queue itself then drives an auto-scaling group of workers. The workers spin up, communicate with the queue, you know, Pulling yeah. off jobs. Do yep. you have any work for me? And then start working on their assigned tasks. They generally need input data that comes out of S3. They generally produce output data that goes back into S3. That's used as an integration point across the business. Mm. So based on all of the jobs that are coming through, I'm assuming these workers are quite transient and yep. spinning those up and down can be a bit clunky. Have you found some better ways? Yeah, in fact, we have. So we just replaced them with spot instances. Wow, fantastic. So what, have, what sort of benefits have you realized there? So with the particular instance type that we were using, which is an R44X large, we actually found that we save about 90% of the cost. So it's wow. massive. That is amazing. Wow, so that's, that's really you know, reduced the cost as well, given that benefit of being able to do those jobs more frequently. Now, I've noticed uh, you know, the cool kids like to play with uh, Slack and Lambda. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we want to be the cool kids as well. Um, so what we've actually got is we've got our workers, they mainly run R, um, around a thin Python wrapper. The process put outputs logs, which we just stream directly into CloudWatch. And we can then use the CloudWatch sort of filtering capability in the subscriptions um, to drive a Lambda function that, say, on a filter as error fatal, fires, and then just sends a notification to Slack, where we then get a nicely formatted notification of, hey, what's going on? And for the not so cool kids, they're still picking up messages out of SNS, Exactly. Right? So this is where we started out with this, but we went to sort of Slack stuff right after. Fantastic. So uh, again, really interesting architecture. How do you manage all of these components? So anything in this box here, so anything AWS really, is managed with CloudFormation, and that's automated via GitLab CI. Um, we also have workers running off of particular AMI, so large compile time dependencies are baked into the AMI. Again, provisioning of this AMI is then driven through GitLab as well. The workers themselves also check out code directly from here. Fantastic. Well, again, some great optimization that you've done. What's next for the architecture? So one of the things we want to look at is how we can integrate this or massage this into the new AWS batch service that was released into Sydney not too long ago. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, now the house hunters of Australia now know where all their data comes from. Nico, thank you for coming in and sharing your architecture with, uh, with us today. And thank you for joining us on This Is My Architecture.